You've got some guts showing up here. Not really. See, evolution in the herb business don't have an issue. Until now. What it comes down to is you chose the wrong company in more ways than one. And now that decision is going to cost you your Intercontinental Championship. And how is that going to happen? One word. Omas. You don't stand a chance against him. I'm not scared of Omas. Name the time and place, and I'll be there. Hold up. There's no need to rush things. Let's get to know each other a little better. Do our due diligence. What I'm thinking is, first you have a non-title match against Carmelo Hayes. Sound good? Sure. Doesn't matter to me. Because it's all going to end the same. Me walking away intercontinental champion. Okay, Locke. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, Gabe, you know the deal. I want you out there for this match to make sure the Hurt Business doesn't get involved. Got it. Wait, do you really think that's necessary? I can handle myself fine. And what's the worst that can happen anyway? A DQ and I get some shots in on MVP and Omas? Or they get some shots in on you and weaken you before your title match against Omas. Come on, use your head. Gabe, you're going out there with him for that match. I don't want to hear another word. Come on, let's go. Mello is money. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, accompanied by MVP from Boston, Massachusetts. Weighing in at 210 pounds, Carmelo Hayes. This guy has future star written all over him. The winner of the 2021 NXT Breakout Tournament, multiple-time NXT North American Champion, and unified that title with the Cruiserweight Championship. He's got a cocky attitude, but a bad habit of backing it up.
Mello ready to do something special. Take a good look at the new face of WWE. It's the lock. Accompanied by Gabriel Slade from Grand Rapids, Michigan, weighing in at 150 pounds, the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Chosen One, Sean Sparks. Rumor has it that The Rock has already had various disagreements with WWE management. Well, the greats are always a little difficult, aren't they? The Lock and Carmelo Hayes are squaring off tonight in a hotly anticipated non-title match between two superstars destined for greatness. The Lock has more than just his IC title with him tonight, as Gabriel Slade will be joining him at ringside. Is Randy Orton losing trust in Lock's ability to get it done all by himself? Or maybe he sent Gabe to keep an eye on MVP? It's hard to get inside the mind of the Viper. Arm ringer applied, and bang, so accurate. to the corner. This can't be good. Now he's shot. Now the blood is flowing from Mello's face. How disrespectful. My gosh. Seal. Here we go. Say it with me, Corey. To the body and just getting started. Look at this brutality. This is how you torture your opponent. Oh my god, this is hard to watch. And we just saw some serious offense. Uh-oh. We're gonna see it. What power. Sit down. He's absorbing some tough hits now. Well, all things considered, Cole, it's not a bad condition to be in at this point in the match. And that was a precisely measured attack. The sound of this crowd is deafening, and he's asking for more. Right to the back of the neck. A continuous attack on Hayes. Carmelo's not showing the capacity to fight back.
sheer confidence of Carmelo Hayes taking over a little. Two. On the apron. Whoa! What a landing! Three. Suicide dive to the outside. Cole does it better. Whoa. And Carmelo gets stifled. Deep to the gun. Hooked up. DDT! Toss back into the ring. So I'll just say what we're all thinking. This was as one-sided as it gets. Let's get this out of the way. I know you didn't want Gabe out there for your last match, but this is too big to risk anything. So I'm going to be in your corner to make sure you hold on to your title. I appreciate the support, but I'm confident I can win this on my own. Besides, you said I was the next version of you. Let me live up to that for once. Our goal in Evolution is to hold championships, and we do that by any means necessary. So I'm not saying you need me to win, but I'm going to be out there to make sure it happens. You know Hurt Business will be doing the same thing. We'd be stupid not to. Look, I realize they have numbers just like us, but I know I can handle myself. So I'm asking both of you to just stay in the back. No one's gonna think any less of you if you have someone in your corner. Gabe's right. This isn't the time to prove a point. So why are we even having this conversation? Gabe would say whatever you wanted him to, but I'm not like that. Yes, we're part of a team, but I'm a future world champion. The Phenom, right? So I need to prove to you and myself that I can do this. That evolution isn't some kind of crutch propping me up. You said I could trust you when I joined evolution, and now you need to trust me on this. Message received. You clearly know what's best for you. Good luck.
one of the tallest competitors in WWE history. The personification of intimidation. The Colossus has arrived. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. That is for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Introducing the challenger from Lagos, Nigeria, weighing in at 400 pounds, the Nigerian Giant Omas. A true dominant giant. No kidding. I got a neck ache just looking up at him. Omas's stature alone fills his opponents with fear. I feel fear in my soul. I'm not, I'm not even in the ring with the guy. Gentlemen, just take a look at the size of this behemoth. It is a scary, frightening sight looking up at a man the size of Omas. It's the future of WWE, The Lock. Introducing the champion from Grand Rapids, Michigan, weighing in at 150 pounds, the chosen one, Sean Sparks. Here we go, guys. We're going to finally have a champion after this one. And you have to imagine these superstars are feeling the pressure here. You don't come into a match of this magnitude without feeling it at least a little bit. Many are predicting a title change here tonight, but this man is looking to prove otherwise. Who's going to lay claim to the workhorse title here tonight? What a night for the lock as he stands alone without his evolution teammates to defend his intercontinental title against the biggest threat but hurt business as the throw at him. Omas! I like what you did there, Cole. No two ways about it. Omas is a gigantic weapon, unlike anything else that exists in all of WWE. Omas may be over seven feet of ferocity, but don't forget about MVP and Carmelo Hayes, who can make their presence known at any time tonight. That'll turn your lights out. belongs to lock. Omas has to weather a storm here. Ah, crush a hamstring. Ah, foot meet back. Well, grabbing the arms and just rapid stops. And another just non-stop aggression. Each of those boots seem to get heavier with each blow. Agility like that is what can set you apart from the rest of the locker room. Close line. 
Well, that'll leave a mark. you wonder where was evolution and now mvp in the hurt business are taking it to the former champion again where is randy orton where is gabriel slave their teammate just got beat down let's not lose sight of the fact that we have a new intercontinental champion in omas but i agree there's definitely something off with evolution Where's Orton and Slate? They were just heading back towards your locker room. Hey, what the hell was that all about? Where were you? You told us to stay in the back. Remember? Yeah, I said stay in the back for the match. But then, in case you missed it, the Hurt Business attacked me. I could have used some backup there. Can we get some privacy? No, I want everyone to see this. What's your deal? Were you trying to send me some kind of message? Actually, we were on our way out to help you, but I got overruled. By who? Me. What? I've heard people say I'm a follower. That I lack killer instinct. That it's held me back my entire WWE career. Huh. I'm done with all that. I made the call to stay in the back. I trusted you. We were teammates even before all this evolution stuff. Teammates? You've never cared about me or anyone else. Every decision you've made has been to benefit you and your career only. Getting me involved in that stupidity with the New Day was a wake-up call. And then your stubbornness against the Hurt Business only cemented who you are. It cost you your title. But that hurts all of us. So explain why we should go out of our way to help you. This is ridiculous. Just like always, you're just saying all this because you know it's what Randy wants to hear. No, I'm saying it because it's the truth. I tried to let you do things on your own, and you failed. Repeatedly. What's next? You're gonna bring down our whole group with you? So maybe I was wrong from the start. Maybe Gabe is the future world champion in evolution. Let's face it, you're not the lock. 
You're the weak link. I don't need you or evolution. I never did. I'm better off on my own. I quit. Good. Clear your stuff out. I don't want to see you again. So, since we last caught up, you got into a fight with New Day over a video game cover, lost your Intercontinental Championship, and then quit Evolution. String of bad luck, or all part of the plan? It was bad luck. I had Omas beat before the ref got in the way and the Hurt Business cheated to take my title. But honestly, it's for the better. I feel like a, a weight has been lifted from me. Dead weight in the form of Orton and Gabe. I never felt comfortable in Evolution. But now that that's all behind me, I can focus on what's next. Well, I certainly believe in you. But what's next? I know I'll become WWE Champion, but something has been off since I debuted, and it's been holding me back way more than Evolution ever did. So what's next? I'm going to confront this issue head on, in front of the entire WWE Universe. Former Intercontinental Champion, The Lock, has requested this time to address the WWE Universe. Now he certainly has a lot to address. Let's be real. I haven't had the best run lately. Most notably, I lost a couple things. My Intercontinental Championship, and then my faction. But this wasn't how things were supposed to go, right? You all heard and saw the endless hype. I was brought in to WWE as the next big thing, a future world champion. And of course, the lock. It worked for a while, but let's be honest, it felt forced from day one. I never was truly comfortable with what I was asked to do. And when it comes down to it, these recent setbacks were just a result of those early decisions that were out of my hands and way above my pay grade. What I'm saying is, I was set up to fail by WWE management, and especially VP of Talent Development, Shawn Michaels. Let me shoot with you. 
Sean was behind all of this from the start, forcing one bad decision after another. So, HBK, I want you to come out here right now so we can talk man to man, face to face. Strong words from the lock. Yeah, he better be careful here. And Shawn Michaels apparently has chosen to come out and respond to these claims. This is a situation that might be better handled off camera, behind closed doors, not in front of the entire WWE Universe. He doesn't look too happy to be put on the spot like this. I heard everything you said, and I'm willing to talk. But you know this isn't the time or the place. This is exactly the time and place. I want everyone to hear how you've mishandled my career since the day I got here. Stop. Now. No. I've played by your rules, but I'm not going to trust the process any longer. From now on, I do what I want to do. That's what got me here in the first place. My voice, my instinct, my talent. You and your corporate yes-men have tried to stifle that every chance you got. Okay. You really want to do this? We've heard your side of things. Here's mine. AKA, the truth. All you've done is complain since day one, thinking you know everything. Like when you chose to drop your special lock entrance after one match. And then you dropped your custom attire right afterwards. You know how much time and money was invested in all of that. And you never gave any of it a fair shot. But there's no change in your mind because you're too stubborn to listen to people who actually know the ins and the outs of this business. The same people who tried to set you up for success, who wanted nothing but the best for you. Hold on. The best for me? Give me one example of something you did to help me. Come on, name one thing. Okay, let's get it all out there. When things weren't going as expected, I went to Randy Orton and MVP and convinced them to start factions, to try to get you back on track. That's how much we believed in you, that we were willing to stick our necks out for you. But I guess that's all stifling and setting you up for failure, right? You said they wanted me. Yeah, because I knew feeding your ego would be the only way to get you to agree to do it. But even that didn't work, because you couldn't learn to cooperate and quit, throwing away an opportunity that everyone in the back would kill for. So I have one final thing to say to you. Don't you ever confuse potential with success, because you might have all the potential in the world, but it doesn't mean anything if you can't get out of your own way. Stop complaining and blaming everyone else and do something for once. You want me to do something? Is that what you want? Words being exchanged here. I'm talking to you. Show me some respect. Sean just took a very awkward fall there and hit the steel steps hard on his way down. I don't think that was intended, but things just took a very bad and unexpected turn. I think he was just trying to get Sean's attention, and it backfired. Officials, including Michael's good friend Triple H, have arrived to check on Sean. Probably best for him to just leave and let things cool down. You're fired! Did Sean Michaels just say he's fired? I think I heard that too. Wow, I can't believe that just happened. This has gotten way out of hand. We just hope Sean's okay.